Hey guys, today I want to show you some really cool and exciting things with AI in AWS. I'm going to show you a bunch of cool things with Amazon Bedrock as well as SageMaker. And the reason I'm making this video is because I got to do an all day training course two days ago with Amazon on specifically AI and machine learning. And I wanted to make a quick unstructured video before I lose access to the demo account, which expires in less than 12 hours. So if you want to learn a bit more about AI, keep watching. We're going to start with Amazon Bedrock because that's the easiest one to get started with. If you type in Bedrock from the search bar, click on this one. This will give us instant access to a range of different AI models. If you click this little hamburger menu on the side, click on base models. You can take a quick look at which different models you can use. We can then enter playgrounds where we can interact directly with any AI that we want. If we go text, this is just a simple one line response. You click select model. We're going to go with Anthropic Claude 3. That seems to be really good. And we're just going to say, hey, how are you? Click run. Text lets you get a single response. If you want to have a back and forth conversation, you can then use chats. Again, it's the same method. Choose a foundational model that you want. And you can have a back and forth conversation. Now the configurations on the right hand side with temperature, top P and top K, these are different statistical values you can play around with. And when you modify those, it changes the way the responses are formed together. The final option in Playgrounds is image. So again, you can select a model, go stable diffusion, and we'll go this one. And here you can create any image. So I want a tree standing in a rainforest. And the great thing with this is, like when you're running it locally, you can do negative prompts, you can have reference images, but I've found it a lot quicker than running on my local PC, which is pretty cool. And you get a high res image that you can then download. I actually quite like this and it's so quick that you could even have a web application where you allow users to create any images they want without having to know AI at all and just plug it into this backend, which I think is really, really powerful. Now I'm going to introduce you to two features which absolutely just blew my mind. The first is knowledge bases. See, when you interact with the large language model, it has been trained on a particular data set. However, if you want to ask it a very specific question that wasn't in the original data set, it'll either guess and get it wrong, or it won't be able to answer your question. So what you can do is upload a range of different documents to S3. These can be internal documents, for example, at your workplace, or medical related documents, or law related, or whatever kind of documents you want. Put into S3, link it to a knowledge base. AIs can't interact with the files directly. They need to chunk and do something called vectorization of the file, which is how it uh, builds its model and interacts with the data and builds those relationships between different words. So what really blew my mind when I did this during the lab a couple of days ago is I asked Claude 2.1, I think it was, what section of the Tenancy Act does willful damage fall under? This is specifically relating to Victorian rental law, but it had no idea. I then uploaded the entire 1997 Tenancy Act in, of Victoria, which is about an 800 plus page documentation. And I asked the exact same question, what section does it fall under? And it told me the exact section, gave me a blurb about it. And then I could say, hey, what page was it on? And it gave me the exact page. I then fact checked it and it was actually correct. And this is huge for several reasons. Large language models are much better than humans at sifting through data like this. So imagine you're a law firm, you can upload all the relevant legislation that you have towards a case and just ask it questions of which particular legislation would apply to this particular case. Same with how do I do X, Y, Z at an internal organization that has been fed all of its company data. And the really neat thing with this is because it's within your own AWS account, you control that data. It's not like you're sending it to a third party like OpenAI, 
who has complete control over yours. When things are within your AWS account, you keep total ownership over your own data. So that's a huge thing. Now the second thing that absolutely blew my mind is this concept of agents. Now unfortunately I didn't get to create a proper one end to end. Here is a kind of working example, but let me draw it. Agents are awesome because you've got your LLM agent. So the way it works is you're talking to your large language model, which can access an agent, which can do things via Lambda functions. So you can be talking to your AI and it can trigger actions based on your conversation. And this is where it gets scary with automation and the possibilities because imagine you were talking to a large language model on a call center and you didn't know it was a machine and you wanted to, I don't know, renew your account, make a payment. The large language model could then recognize that you want to make a payment, use an agent to call backend services to authenticate you to process the payment or do whatever other action you're allowed to do. The ability for large language models to access agents to do workflows in the background based on that conversation. I was worried about mass unemployment in the future, but the tech is already here. Businesses just haven't figured out how to use it. They don't know about it yet. So that's a quick overview of Bedrock. Now I want to show you some really cool things in SageMaker, I think it was. I'm not doing this training course material justice. If you ever get the chance to do that AI slash machine learning training with AWS, which is a level 300 training, I highly, highly recommend doing it. It's probably one of the best training courses I have done to date. Okay, so in SageMaker, we're gonna look at Studio Lab. Essentially, this is actually a, new, a piece of software that was new to me. It's called, it's built off of Juniper Labs which basically is a notebook style app that people in the data scientist area already use, but essentially it lets you make really cool notes and execute Python scripts to a virtual machine within your notebook. And let me show you. So if we go, I actually can't remember how to get into it. Let me go studio, ah, yeah. Okay, so it's studio and then open studio. Now some of these features as of recording may only be available in certain region, AWS regions. I'm currently using US West 2 for your reference. So this is the studio built off of that piece of software. Basically, we're gonna to go to Studio Classic and we currently have a virtual environment running. We're gonna click open. Now, what is really cool with this is it lets you do all of your Python coding and interacting with the APIs programmatically because obviously, when you're building out a web application to integrate AI into, you're not gonna be clicking around in the Amazon Bedrock console like I was manual click ops. You're gonna be executing through these libraries and via code. And this lets you do it rather seamlessly. All of the code that you're gonna see is available for free on GitHub. I will put a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. Some things to note, on the left-hand side you have home, you have your folder. So this is where you can open up some files there is Git integration, and if you click on this, it will show you all of your running servers. So at the moment, I have quite a lot. Obviously, once you're done with your notebook, you should shut it down so that you're not paying. This environment is going to be deleted in 12 hours automatically anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. Now we're gonna go through some really cool things programmatically. We're gonna start with some very basic text generation, which is exactly what we did through the console. But basically, this is a notebook where you've got all of your notes, explanations of what you're doing. You simply click, hit shift, enter. You'll see that it has a number and that means it's executed. So we're gonna just shift, enter through all of these. Basically, this is how you can interact programmatically with the APIs. You send through some prompt data, you prepare your JSON body, and here we go, we have some output. So essentially we asked it to write an email from Bob, customer service manager, to a customer who provided negative feedback and it did. It said, dear John, I hope blah, blah, blah. Typical corporate speak. 
but you get the idea. Kind of getting the ideas in your head spinning. Imagine you had a customer complaint email address. You could hook that into an LOM. Don't even have people there. When a new email comes into the inbox, you trigger the LOM to reply to the customer. And if there are any actionable things that the business should take note of, you could then forward that onto the relevant department to make actual improvements. Now, another cool thing with APIs, generally, this is what I do. I just make the request directly to get the response. But what you can do is you can also stream the response. And this is what you typically see when you use ChatGPT, where it sends the response out in chunks. So if I hit Shift Enter, it should, there we go. It was a bit quick, but it's broken it up for you. So this is chunk one that will come first, chunk two, then chunk three. Now, there are other examples in this repo of code generation, text summarization, so summarize a piece of text, which it does. Ooh, this was a cool one. So entity extraction, basically you could use the AI to extract certain phrases or things that you actually care about within a big chunk of text. They use some, something called Langchang to achieve this. Um, let's actually just run through it quickly. So we're going to run that. So basically you're receiving an email and a customer is asking, do you have a book? And what we're doing is we are extracting just that book name from the entire email contents and printing it out, Treasure Island. And why I found this fascinating was eventually I was thinking of using AI to make a trading bot. With the crypto markets being unregulated and constantly going up and down, I thought it would be cool to monitor some key people like Elon Musk, um, Logan Paul, and a bunch of high profile people. And basically whenever they tweet something with a crypto coin in that tweet, I wanna buy immediately and then start selling within 24 hours. I could use the Twitter API to feed into a large language model to extract just the coin and then action workflows off of that. And so that's why, and so that's why the text extraction was really important for me. Not gonna use it yet, but it's really cool to know that you can do that using a combination of this code, <clears throat> using a combination of this code, Langchain, Beautiful Soup, and a couple other libraries. I think I'll stop there because it's past midnight, but let me just quickly share some of the notes I made. If you want to clone the repo and muck around, the first time you will get this error message, you need to first go to Bedrock, Model Access, Manage Model Access, and then click all of them. It's your typical end user license agreement. Once you do that, you can then execute these. If you see some of the text get cut off, you will have to add a max token count. Essentially, the default I think was 500 and sometimes it would cut it off. Just add a couple more tokens. Another thing they mentioned, if you're using the Claude LLM, use XML in your tagging prompts, you'll get better responses as that is what a lot of their training data was used on. Then we covered prompt engineering. So zero shot is you just ask it a question. Few shot is you give it a bit of background or information or how you want it to behave. And then chain of thought where you sequence these all together. What I really liked about few shot is you could easily do sentiment analysis. So over here, you, we were looking at particular tweets. We gave it examples of what a negative and a positive tweet was. We could then feed it another one in through an API and see what the sentiment is. So if you were a, a company wanting to know, hey, what's our social media presence like? Are we having positive or negative sentiment in our comments? You could build tooling off of that using this model. Yep. Entity extraction, like I said, super useful if you want to do any trading bots. Yes. RAG, where you embed your knowledge base, is super powerful. And finally, I didn't realize just how prohibitively expensive it was. You can fine tune and like train your own custom models. You can do that in Amazon Bedrock. However, it is super expensive. The figures they showed us was $17,000 a month because you need dedicated hosting to host your own private model. So a lot of companies, instead of training custom models and paying such a huge price, they either 
they either do the prompt engineering to get the kind of responses they're after from an existing foundational model, or they do that rag where they add in their knowledge base vectoring on top of the foundational model. From the initial testing that I did, that seems to be the way to go. But yeah, very powerful and so many cool things you can tink around with. I'm going to go away, digest it a little bit and learn more about this stuff because this seems really powerful and really cool. I hope somebody got value out of this. I know it was a bit all over the shop, but I just wanted to capture some thoughts around this training and share some of the things I learned before I lose access to this demo account in less than 12 hours. So that's all I had for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.